still had not broken. broken. It was fine. And on day five, the midwife was sitting there and you were the, the midwife came in every so often. She was like, Hey, how you doing? Let me check. Bump, bump, bump. Shoved her hand up wherever she had to do. Walked out. You're fine. Not ready. But you were there the whole, whole I think time. I heard that you left. And this I don't remember because I was in the thick of it, right? Michael said you left to get clothes. Yeah. At some point. Like you mm-hmm. went home. It was that fifth. It was that fifth day before the midwife what? came. It wasn't like before she came back. No, 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 I had it. I had enough clothes for those days. And and I- also, <laughs> and also, your sister was there. Like we were really working as a team. We were mm-hmm. all with you. Was there, she showed up she at some there. point. Yes, she showed up there. and she stayed. Was and then my my hips. The hip. those things you were doing, like at the end, I was like, if if I'd get a contraction. Pressing my hips together was the only thing that helped a little bit to 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 t- tamp down the the sensation. And in um, full disclosure, you know, the day one we went, it was totally fine, and you were eating and drinking and walking around, and your contractions would get closer together and they would space out. You went every day. It, it was complete five days of having contractions about yeah. five minutes apart, not getting any closer, but completely five days. And we did, we walked, and were, we ate. And they got intense. Intense. And, and we used the birthing tub, I think, one day. One, the day mm-hmm. one. Day one. And after that, you were like, nah. That's no. Stalled. Because every time you got in the tub, your contractions would space all the way back out. And it was like, it was like, no, that's not helping. So we, yes, we used it on day one and then we didn't use it again. And then you also, you also did Reiki. Did I? Yeah. Yeah, You call, you called your Reiki master. Oh my gosh. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. So, so we tried, we were doing everything. (laughs) (laughs) We were pulling out all, but you were a trooper and you were just like, you know, day one, you were like, okay. Day two, you were like, really? Day two. Day mm-hmm. three, and your mom was calling in as well. Yeah, was she, like, was, oh, no. she was close <laughs> by. Yes. She was freaking out. She was at my sister's house down the block. And I remember we visited her because we I was yeah. like, oh, let's go for a walk at day mm-hmm. two, three. Yeah. And I'm sitting there eating. She'd make me eyes like two fried eggs. And she's like, well, you have to go to a doctor. I don't think you should go to a doctor now. And I was like, no, I'm fine. Everything's good. And my aunts in Venezuela were blowing up her phone lighting candles it was insane like all the ants I have 11 all of them were like we all gave birth to that baby so it was not just you you didn't give birth to that baby baby. yes and And then the the uh, day the end of day five right we day five I had gone home to to get some clothes and we were waiting for the midwife to come over and you and Michael had spoken and you and Michael then made the the decision yeah but we were kind of like, what do you think? And she was like, you know, it's your just Like, she was super laissez-faire, just super yeah. chill. And at that point, we're like, we're going to the hospital. <laughs> yeah. And we transferred to St. Vincent's. I miss that place so much. I love that place. We went there. They were amazing, except for the animal doctor that we got uh, yeah. on call. He was the, the, the attending doctor. And he was um, his first thing was telling us about how you know midwives are are fine and all but you know there's you know hundreds of you know graves all over the world yes that was just so awful and unnecessary midwives and and dead you know mothers that didn't survive midwifery and it was just like what and I remembered I remember I had heard somebody talking about a 7 30 a.m shift because I got to the hospital and I met the animal, and because that's his name now. And they had given me, without meeting him yet, they had, or maybe I did meet him, I don't remember, they gave me an epidural to speed up the contractions. And I had, I think, four or five hours of an epidural with, I mean, four or five hours of Pitocin, not an epidural. Yes, Pitocin. Without an epidural. Epidural, exactly. And I would do five days of labor over again than those four hours of Pitocin with no Pitocin, Pitocin, yeah. Pitocin, epidural, because that was agony. 
it was yeah. one long contraction that made contraction. Mm-hmm. It was the mm-hmm. worst pain. It was torture. And then eventually they stopped. They were like, this isn't working. They tried to give me an epidural. And then the baby's heart rate dropped. Went down. So they mm-hmm. pulled it right out. And it went down. It didn't go. It went right back up as soon as they pulled out the whatever they were starting to do. Catheter. But mm-hmm. I never got an epidural. And thank you for knowing all the words. And <laughs> they pulled out the thing. And then I lied down and uh, in came the animal. And he said his, you know, signature move, you know, like midwives are great, but, you know, there's plenty of dead ladies. And I was like, in, you know, you're in a mind frame where you, you, you cut out all the fat, right? You don't have a conversation. You're not sitting there. No niceties. You're just like, I need water. Now do that. Yes. So in exactly. my made a decision, I did not share that with anyone because mm-hmm. it's not where I was at. Okay. But at that point, moment, I said, that man's not touching this child. I will come until the shift change at 730. I don't know who will come, but I know that will be the person who delivers my child. Yes. And they gave me Demerol. Was it Demerol? It was Demerol. Mm-hmm. They gave me Demerol and that knocked me out because yes. I hadn't slept. Yep. Now day I- six. Now day six. Yeah. And they gave me Demerol. I slept for four hours, four, five, six, seven, about four hours, right? And when I woke up, this angelic Indian doctor, I still see rays of light behind her head when she walked into the room and she just looked down at me and said, I think it's time. Yeah. I just smiled and I said, "Mm mm-hmm. And Michael, who's kneeling next to me, he's in a chair or something, and he's like, wait, what? I, what? And he starts crying because he's like, did, did you just make a decision? Like, I don't, what happened? Like, he had no idea that I had made this decision. I'd never told him. And he told her, you know, like, can you stitch her, double stitch her? Because, you know, so she, if she we wants had to spoken her, about that. Exactly. So you could have a feedback. Hey, you read that book that I didn't read. <laughs> Good man, that one. And once we decided to do the C-section, girl, that baby was not 20 minutes. <laughs> like, can you, just for the record, could you say how long he was? He was 21 inches. 21, no, 22. He was, no, he was 23 inches. No. Yes, I, yes. I yes. have you have to look you have to you have to you have to look it up because I remember going that is the longest baby that (laughs) I've ever had in my career and he was nine pounds five ounces nine pounds five ounces and he was bald as a cue ball white (laughs) as snow and blue eyed and I was like who that baby baby (laughs) baby (laughs) not my baby who the mama took him out of my body and I was still conscious and they brought him over I saw him because I, he, once they take him out, because I, oh, so one last little detail. They were like, do you want to go walk to the surgery surgery room or do you want to uh, wheel over? And I was like, no, 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 I'll walk. Because in my mind, I was still like, I got to walk. I got to, yes, you know, you have to still keep going. Dialing, keep going. You know? Yes. And knowing that I'm about to walk into this room and they're going to slice him out. Like, that was yes. stupid. And Michael walked me to the door and he walked away. And as I turned, to walk through the threshold, I got another contraction, and I was like, oh, I know, my, my, I couldn't even speak. I couldn't even say the word, but I wanted him to press my hips. Hips, yeah. But the pain was, I was beyond. Finally, they get me on the bed, and they're like, you feel this? And I was like, yeah, but take him out anyway. I'm fine. And I watched the whole thing from the light above. Mm-hmm. Like, can you see? And I was like, no. Maybe that I could. I could. Yes, of course. Reflection. Of course. And want to get rid of it because I was curious. Yeah. Um. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> That's horrifying. <laughs> um, so. I I watched the whole thing there. I was like, oh, that's me on the inside. Oh, my God. And they brought the baby, but got pulled out. And he started to cry immediately. And I was like, and Michael and I both started crying. Because I had forgotten it was a baby. Baby in there. Like a human. Yes. I was like, I'll just be pregnant for the rest of my life. I'll be really discomforted for the rest of my life. I'll be in labor for the rest of my life. Like, you forget that there's a a goal Mm -hmm. at the end. And he started crying, and I was like, oh, right, a baby. It's there. It's alive. 
And they brought the baby over and they showed the baby and they, you know, they clean him up, whatever. And as they go to take the baby away, Michael's staying with me. And I was like, you stay with that child at every stop. You do not leave that child's side. And he's like, well, but what about you? Don't worry about me. I'll be fine. You go stay with that baby. Because I had read all the stories of like, yeah, yeah switched to the hospital. They find out two, three <laughs> years later, 25 years later, that baby's not yours. Yeah. And, and you yeah. know, yeah. that baby's so white. If I, Michael had not been with him the whole time, I'd be like, are you sure you were with sure him that- all the time? Exactly. <laughs> He looks so much like dad, though, and he's so much like exactly, exactly. exactly. There's, believe. there's no denying. There's no denying. And that's part of the reason why I wanted you to tell your story is because five days of labor, full exactly. labor, even though they consider it prodromal because you didn't go past four centimeters, but that's still five full days of five minute apart contractions without a break of yeah. labor, and, and I, you did it. And I, and I have to say. Like five days, and I, and I don't, I'm not, I, I mean this. I, I would do that again over the Pitocin. Oh, yes. That, that that fake contraction that lasts forever and doesn't give you a break. Like it, the, I saw the little light would go up and it's like, oh, now it's going down and you're not supposed to feel anything. And then it goes up and I was like, that's not working. It's not, yes, it's not Whatever, going down. That's not what's happening. I'm feeling it all the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was it was intense. And having a second child, natural birth. How was that experience? Like, so the first experience we went home birth, and the second experience, what was the plan? Never, we did a one eighty. Never got a full answer as to why he I didn't progress. Right? Yes. It, they were like, maybe he was asynclitic, you know, and his head was a little cocked to the side, so you couldn't get it the baby to efface you, uh, or his head was too big, or for some reason your body didn't dilate, mm. or like there was either or all these options. Yeah. And I didn't know what it was, and I didn't know whether this was going to be a, a repeat effect. Uh, if I had a second child, if it was going to be the same situation. Yeah. So we went with an OB who had, um, uh, worked at the St. Luke's Roosevelt mm-hmm. and they did VBACs, right? Because yes, I'm, that I'm was with- important. And a VBAC is a vaginal birth after cesarean. Right. And it was supposed to be, um, uh, uh, so I, I got a book called yeah. Silent Night. No. I had that one. I did childbirth. That's okay. the book that I was like. Once I got that book, I think you turned me on to it. Yes. It changed the whole game for me because it was a bunch of birth stories, natural birth stories. Mm-hmm. And I think if I'd read that book the first time, I don't know. But one of the things that I talked about, what it did, it had me do like an exercise, you know, like drawing exercises or writing. So what's your fear? What's this? What's that? And I, I delved into that because I was like, I'm still experiencing not only the fear of, you know, can my body do this? Am I broken? Yeah. Uh, and, and second, you know, I didn't really give birth the first time. I, I, I'm, I'm a faker, you know, like I'm a mom, but it was really just a C-section. I didn't really do it. Yeah. And you had that feeling. Yeah. That, that, that thing that I was kind of sort of putting on being a mom. Being a mom. <laughs> Being a mom. <laughs> exactly. It's on the face. <laughs> Putting on being a mom and faking it because I was spending all this time, like, because I hadn't really given birth, right? And I remember it was something in that book where she was like, whether it, it asked me to speak to the fear and, and deal with the fear and ask the fear what it was and where it was coming from. And, and from that, exercise and talking to you this somebody said or the book said or you said you you are a mother and you gave birth whether you did it cesarean whether you had a vaginal birth however this baby came through you you gave birth Mm -hmm. and I was like okay so I'm I'm not a faker and I was grateful for that kind of re uh Reaffirming. 
Yes. Well, re re envisioning how I was the the lens through which I was seeing my first birth. You know, mm. I was like, I didn't really do it. You know, yeah. I, I didn't progress beyond three centimeters, and I went to the hospital. They cut them out. Like, I didn't really do it. I, I cheated. You know, I, it, it's it's. I know it's illogical, but that's you know. The, that's the, how you felt. Yeah. It's valid. Of of things that you don't say. Mm-hmm. Um, and then for the second one, I was like, you know, I I, I was embracing what was going to happen. And one of the things that Ayn May said says is that she doesn't like to call it labor and she doesn't like to call them contractions, contractions. She likes to call labor contractions, a very intense feeling that you have to work very hard to stay on top of, which is a very long way of, uh, um, putting it, uh, words to contraction, contraction is more faster. but I like that because that was something that I could visualize. Mm-hmm. I could work with that image of, okay, it's a sensation and it's a sensation that I can stay on top of. So it doesn't take over, take over you. Exactly. And I went with that attitude into the next labor with a totally different welcome to the process of, of giving birth. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I gave, I, I was at my, I was four days beyond my due date, right? We were all on the same track. And I was like, right. <laughs> this is, I got a doctor who's got my back. She'll tell me when I got to go in and under yeah. the night if need be, but for now. And they were like, now you have to go in every day to get a test because you're four days you're over your due date and you're over a certain age. And I was like, these people crazy. I can barely walk down my hallway and they're going to have me traipse my happy ass all the way over to the hospital so they can tell me I'm still pregnant. I'll tell you I'm still pregnant. <laughs> I don't need to go in for you to tell me that. And the baby's okay. Yeah. yeah. From their day four and I was like, and this is going to be the last day I come till next week because I'm not doing <laughs> I'm this. I'm not coming back. Pain yeah. was really like I had very hard trouble walking. Remember the hip pain was yes. even worse okay. at the, time, the second yeah. birth, the birth, second birth second late um, pregnancy. So I was like, yeah, nah, you can't make me do this. And I was during, they were doing the sonogram mm-hmm. and I was getting these like, since, oh, baby's moving. And, oh, oh, baby moving so much. It's, uh, now it's so intense. And mom's like, that's, that's labor. And I was like, mom, please. And I walk into the thing and I, and I go to sit down and I'm like, oh, Oh, this baby is moving so much. And the you did it, it didn't register. It wasn't registering. No, well, I never, it didn't feel that way the first time. First time, exactly. Yeah, it yeah. was different. And so I was like, he's moving. And he's very, he was very active in my belly all the time. So it felt similar to, because he would do drumming sessions in there all the time. <laughs> so I was like, and he's bigger now, so he's you know got less space. Less so space. Drive me to drink right now. And so I go to lie down, and I get this sensation. Oh man, hold on, it's just the the baby's moving. Hold on, and she looks at me, and she's like, "That's a contraction." And I looked at her, and I was like, "No, it's not." <laughs> uh, and then oh, yeah. I back, and she does it. I get another one, and I see because the ba- the belly went. <clears throat> Like it, it, the whole yeah. belly contracted, the whole belly got and I hadn't yeah. seen it until I was lying down, and I was like, "Oh, oh, that's different." Yeah. And then we walked out, and I'm like, "Mom, I'm in labor!" <laughs> Excited and ready. Go see one of my higher my level daughter, and I was like, "No, no, I gotta call in it." So I go downstairs. <laughs> I leave the the go to the lobby, and I call you because in the whole lobby is when I realized I'm. Okay, this is officially labor. And I yeah. said to my mom, I, I think you're right. This is officially labor. And she's like, hi, hi. My mom's, you know, stressing out. And I said, uh, I call you and I'm like, I think I'm in labor. I've been timing it. I think it's like, there are, you know, however much of pride I don't even know, but it's, it's, I can still talk and I'm walking and I'm, you know, whatever yeah. it is I told you. I was so excited. And, and mom, and you're like, all right. And, and I said, listen, I'm going to go home and I'm going to get my stuff, get ready. And mom's like, you're going home? And I'm like, yeah, man. I mean, they like, say, we still have time. Yeah. Last time it was five days. days. Um, like, if I cut this in half, it'll be two and a half days at least. So, like, let's go home, get the stuff. I still have to finish 
getting a music cue for the queued up for the hospital and I have to get my clothes on a shower and let's, yes. oh let's go to Starbucks and get me a drink to celebrate before we go home like I had oh yeah, yeah. could have gone out salsa dancing and my mother's like what are you doing so we walk into Starbucks and she's like let's go home and I'm like come on we went the line's snaking out and I was like it's fine we got time and I'm on the online with waiting with my mom who's freaking out and I'm like <sighs> oh okay it's over and she's like I we get my <laughs> as we're leaving I'm about to get on the subway she's like we're not getting on the subway we're taking a cab and I'm stopping for it Thank you for mom. Yes. Hi, mom. Okay. We'll take a cab. We'll get it all up. And <laughs> we get in the cab. And as we're driving home, it's getting more intense. But I'm like, okay, it's intense. You know, like, it's just, it's what it is. You know, and I, um, as I'm, I can't sit either, you know, and I'm like, okay, you know, I get in the well because it's not comfortable to sit when I get the sensation. So I'm like, I'm standing and like kneeling in the well of the sea. I'm like, ooh, ooh, <laughs> okay. And then we get out of the car, we go upstairs and like, knock on the door, walk in, and Michael's like, hey, babe. Um, and I'm like, hey. He's like, okay, I'm making dinner for August. And I'm like, okay. And my mom's looking around like, isn't no one oh, my God. This? She's in labor. We have to go. <laughs> she was ready to call the authorities on us because she was like these are not same people oh, yes we making dinner for august and i'm <laughs> i'm squatting going through my my little contractions my sensations breathing and then at one point I, I, we weren't home an hour um sorry i gotta plug in like my battery's dying no worries we were more than an hour i was squatting uh in the middle of setting up a music cue for you know a playlist for the hospital. For the hospital. Mm-hmm. And I get this uh, contraction. I chill. I start doing it. And then all of a sudden, my water breaks. And I'm like, oh! And the contraction I got right after my water broke. Oh, girl. <laughs> I got up. And as I'm going to the bathroom to clean up, and I said, Michael, we're going to the hospital. And I remember getting the call, and you were saying to me, Well, this is different. Yes. Michael's Uh making dinner for August, and he's getting ready to feed August. And he's like, Wait, but what? And I was like, Get Annette on the phone. (laughs) I'm no longer like, you know, Hey, I can breathe through it. I can walk through it. I can talk through it. I go to the bathroom, I'm cleaning up. He's like, oh, well, but I thought you wanted to labor. No, we're going to the hospital now. And he gets on the phone and calls you and he's like, Annette wants to talk to you. <laughs> and I'm like, Annette, this is real. I don't remember. And now, now I don't remember. You said, so I got on the phone and I was like, this is great. This is progress. Let's wait an hour. And you said, this is different. <laughs> we're going to the hospital. And we're meeting you there. And I said, okay, I will meet you there. I'm walking out the door. I'll be in front of the hospital. And you hung up on me. You didn't even say goodbye. You were just like, and I said, oh, this is different. (laughs) She's in it. (laughs) Oh, my God. I don't remember that. I remember. I don't remember if. I think I asked Michael to call you to get a wheelchair, right? Yes, on the uh, one right, the way we yes. were there. Because, on the way there, he called me again to get a wheelchair. I was out front. Was I was waiting. Yeah, having trouble walking. Yes, you were like the 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 sensations that I was getting after my water broke, girl. It was like I couldn't take a step. Yeah. So we get to the, st- the the cab. Michael stops the cab. He sees me. The cab driver's trying to w- drive off. And he, <laughs> Michael opens the door and he looks at the driver and he says, don't move. <laughs> and he ushers me and my little roly-poly self in. I am holding on to the driver's seat and Michael's knee or the 
chair. I don't know. In kneeling in the well, and I'm in it. I'm like, I don't know what's going on. The guy in front of me freaking out. He has all the ideas that I'm gonna give birth in his birth cab. In cab. Mm-hmm. He's gonna have baby birth on the seat. Like he's just like oh. all over. He's seen it before. He does not want to see it again. Yeah, you know. And, and right before. He drives into the hospital, and right before I get out, I, I touch his shoulder, and he went, <gasps> <laughs> and I said, <laughs> and I, you know, it was the last moment of sentient thought that I had, that I remember thinking, let me express gratitude to him, because I see he's scared. <laughs> And I said, thank you. And he's like, Like, just get out. Just get out. (laughs) We're here. I get out. I see you and your angelic seat in front of you. And I'm like, that's what I need. We get in the seat. We drive straight to that amazing, like, just the birth elevator. And that. What was that? That that turd, that cat in the elevator? In the elevator. And, yeah. I'm supposed to press a button. And I'm like, no. And he pressed a button before 11 yes and I was like that son of a <clears throat> and I'm sitting in the chair like I gotta wait a whole extra floor and I think the elevator stopped on another stop yeah and stopped on another was like no 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 on. nobody's getting on we were we were both like nobody else is getting on <laughs> and then and then we got out and then they, they let us go they they drove took us in there like fill out paperwork and I was like I don't know the paperwork I, I'm I'm trying to fill out paper and they're like put the monitor on and I was like I can't lift my leg <laughs> I can't put a monitor on like we're at our from when I started the contractions at maybe five or so we're at our it's seven o'clock seven thirty like it's not that much later and this is progressing. Very quickly. And I don't remember what happened. They After, had me, they put me on the bed. They, they put you in the bed. They put you in triage. You were in triage. Yeah, you and, and Michael were in triage. I yeah, couldn't come in. Yeah. And I know Michael was next to me and he kept saying, you're doing great, bitch. And I'd get a, another sensation and I'd focus on it and then I'd finish and you're doing, you're doing great, babe. And then he said it so much. I was like, stop saying that. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> And then, and then I stopped. I was not part of everything. At one point, a voice started talking to me and told me, on the next contraction, you, it was a man's voice, and he was very calm. I was meditating, and I was doing uh, channeling while yeah. I was pregnant. And this voice that I would talk to when I was channeling showed up in the labor. And that mm-hmm. voice was like, the next retraction, you were going to push. At this point, you're ready. And I was like, yes, I will do whatever you say. <laughs> and on the next contraction, I don't, they, the last they told me I was seven centimeters out. Yes. We were still in triage. Still in triage. We were still in triage when this happened. Me, seven centimeters. And on the next one, I was like, ah! and I remember that sound. Ah! Yeah. And I remember hearing a nurse from some other behind a wall somewhere and they're like, oh, honey, don't push. Yeah, you're not ready yet. And I was like, shut up. Nobody <laughs> Just, I have other instructions. <laughs> and I don't, somebody must have checked me to know that. No. Was- so what happened was I had gotten in because I was, I, I came in under the guise that I was going to bring you a little water. Oh, thank you. And then we closed the door. And then when you started pushing again, we opened the door and I said to a nurse that was walking by, I was like, she's pushing. She's bearing down. The baby is coming. And they were like, no, no, no. And they wheeled you into the room and in the hallway, you were still bearing down and we wheeled you into the room. The doctor was coming in right behind and she was like, no, don't push yet. And you were like, don't push. And you just kept pushing. And we got you into the room, and that's when you started pushing again. Oh, see, I don't. I'll, I remember. 
I, I did that. I bared down, and I remember the, the nurse saying something incredibly stupid, and I was like, you are not part of this right now. <laughs> and then I remember wheeling down the hall. Yes. And then I remember transferring to another bed. Oh, my God, that was awful. Yes. Getting off of that and bed to another. Death, death, death on the platter. And then pushing again, and she was like, you're doing it wrong. We got the Russian nurse, and she was like, yes. Or something. And she was just so no nonsense. You're like, you're doing it wrong. Don't push like that. But that's what I needed to cut through the fog. Yes. Like, I was mm -hmm. so not there. And she was like, you're not doing it wrong. What you need to push, you're, what you're going to do, you burst your blood vessels if you do that. You need to. Yes. You to, you're pushing in your face. That's how to yes. do it. And I don't remember how she did it. It's what she said. But she's like, don't use your voice or something like that. Hold your breath. No huh? air out. Hold yeah. your breath. No air out. Take a deep breath. Hold it. And bear down like you're going to poop. That's what she was yeah. saying. Yeah. Yes. 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 And uh, that must have been it. And I remember we were pushing. I don't remember how long I pushed, but I remember thinking, but I'm only seven centimeters dilated. This isn't going to work. <laughs> this is all in my head. I'm yes, yes. Mm -hmm. But at that point, I said, I think we should do a C section. Yes, I remember that. I remember that. And the so, doctor looked at you and said, well, what, well, why? He said, it's too late for that now, honey. <laughs> that I remember thinking. It's too late, but I'm not dilated yet. Like in my mind, no one ever told me I was dilated. So I'm like, I'm still seven centimeters. This baby's not gonna come out. And then she said, I don't don't know what sex this baby is, but whatever it is, you're gonna be able to put a barrette on it. <laughs> yes, I remember. Uh -huh. yep. Head full of hair. Yes, and then the baby popped out like a slithery snake. Like it, it was, you know, crowning and then, and back then in, crowning yeah. and then back in. And I think like on crown three, whoop, like the, the first head popped in and then the rest of me just like slithered out and it tore. I tore a little bit, a little bit. Um, but we went from five day labor to five hours. And so speak a little to that, like how, I, how, I, it had to do with the fact that I wasn't so scared like the terrified the terror that I had within me that I wasn't going to be able to survive a birth mm -hmm. was I think so much that it stalled my first labor yeah like, if it wasn't for modern medical intervention I don't I think we would have been one of those casualties mm -hmm. like I, I I think that the first animal doctor is right in that respect like if we were in the backwoods somewhere it probably would not have happened so well. Yeah. Um, so I'm grateful to have had both experiences because um, we, we uh, people often poo-poo one and, and raise yes. on a pedestal the other, on either direction. Yeah. Exactly. And I think we, they need to be mutually exclusive. I think they both can mm -hmm. live on equal ground. They're both valid. Yeah. Uh, natural birth, uh, medical and eventual uh, they're both necessary depending on the birth of what the woman needs. Yeah. Um, and there's, and for me, having had both available was a blessing, like truly yeah. a blessing. And I think probably saved our lives. Um, but the, I think the fact that I wasn't so scared, I'd worked through a lot of it, the, that internal, like that buried fear that it, the things that you don't say. Yes. And I think I was able to just, breathe into it's literally effacing yeah like, just letting your body do the work like thinning out letting letting space for this child to come through mm -hmm. just allow that yeah uh yeah but my birth story i don't tell women who have not had children and yes. I don't tell women who are pregnant about my birth story uh because precisely because i don't want them to get scared about it because I know that this fear stalled me. I yeah. think okay, this is now, you know, after 10 years of musing about it, I'm thinking, you know, I think it might have been the fear that stalled that first birth. It could have been that he was very big, it could have been a million other things, but I do think that the the fear was part of it. I, I, I let go into the second labor so much more. I didn't. Yeah. Fear it. I welcomed it in a way that the first one I was, you know, when, when I went past my due date, I remember talking to my son and saying, you know, 
it's okay. Take the time you need. You know, if you need to be in there longer, it's it's all about you, Papa. You know, you take your time. Nobody's rushing you. But really, I was telling him that for me. Yeah, yeah for yourself. To give yourself the space. <laughs> I wanted the time. I wanted the, the respite from, you know, like mm-hmm. pushing me further away. Like, we can, yeah. we can push it any longer, you know. Like, there's a finite time to this, you know. But you needed that time and space to do, just to be and be okay with it, right? For the first or second? The second. The time and space. For after, you know, after you going past your due date, day one, day two, day three, like you needed that space as well. Yeah, but I had done a lot of that sort of meditation and kind of internal work mm-hmm. during the pregnancy. And I had kind of opened the, the box of like, okay, what is it that I'm scared of? What is it that I'm really worried? Because my mom, you know, all her stories of giving birth were like, I had them gassing every time. Mm. I didn't know anything about it. I went through it. It was awful. And they gassed me. And I just wanted to go to bed. I wanted to fall, pass out and not know what happened. Wow. Yes. So in my mind, I... And, you know, you see the movies and you read the books, whatever. You, you read the, the the book, The Red Tent, and, and there's that yes. little story of the lady who was, almost died when she gave birth. And I was like, that's me. I'm going to be that one. You know, like. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> connected to that. Yeah. Like, you know, that one story you hear about the baby that got switched in the hospital. I'm like, that's not going to be me. I mean, we gotta re- I mean you, you, you hold on. Yeah, you that. attach yourself to the, the things that right are irrational. Yes. Which is why, you know, I, I see pregnant women and I'm like, this is a safe space you have to surround yourself with only positive things because negative stuff is going to happen because life is happening still but do your best to just surround yourself with positive thought positive people positive information so that nothing gets in the way of you and gestating a baby and both of you being healthy to birth which is why I don't tell people I mean I, I I like the way you characterize you know like no I think it's a good story to tell people because you know it's you did five days and you got through, and that's yeah. that's empowering. It's very empowering. Put it that way, you know. I'm I'm ten years beyond that first birth, and and I'm still learning yeah. how to look at it, you know. And that's it's a, it's a valuable and good way to to think about it. I still won't tell pregnant women. I women. I totally understand that, and and I and I agree with that because that you don't hold on you to don't that. you don't want them to hold everyone will plant themselves into the negative feeling of it. And then, and I often tell moms, like, I will tell you my birth story after, like, you only need to know that it is challenging. It's difficult, but guess what? You can do it however you do it. And that, I think that message is a message that needs to be told more often because everyone is so quick to tell these moms that a horror story or this or that and it's it's not going to be you can't do it you exactly exactly you know because everyone is processing their their fears yeah and and they've their experiences they're not no one's going to therapy on the regular to process their birth experiences for the most part. So what they do is tell their story over and over and over again to other women. And that's a form of like processing it, but they don't realize that's a for, form of trauma. You're, you're traumatizing oh, someone yes. else's experiences. Yes, yes. So I can appreciate not, not telling, but I think too, that, like I said, it's, it's really inspirational to hear that you did five days and you were fine. People think five days, like I can't, that I would die. You no, did five you days don't. And you were fine. You don't. And you had a baby and then your second experience was completely different, but you did some work. Like you prepared yourself because you realized that the fear is what was there the first time. And now this time you turned around and you're like, I have to change that. And that book and, and hearing positive stories, reading positive stories just reinforces that and idea. of women who gave birth. Yes. Like literally gave birth like that book is chock full of stories of women who gave birth and I hadn't heard stories the one that stuck out in my head most was this woman who had not she was scared yes and she she held her hands and she was like you have to give birth to this baby but you're stalling it yes not the baby yes so somehow she talked to her and and she kind of broke down and she she faced that fear like in the moment right mm-hmm. and the baby boop 
Oh, yeah. you know, and, and I, you know, for a while, I even thought during my second pregnancy, I was like, maybe I should go down and live in this, this commune. They live. And have this baby. <laughs> yeah, I think I think every mom who reads that book has that that thought. I had that thought as well. I mean, if only it was so easy. You but did. Yeah. Well, you practically did that. <laughs> that story. I'll I'll tell that story another time. But yes, <laughs> I'll tell time. my story. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you so much, Sabrina. I I yeah. really really Having appreciate. Me, I'm so blessed to know you and that you're doing this beautiful work that you're ex- expanding knowledge and sharing it with other women who either may not know it and not have children or have had children and reframing what those stories are so that they can process the whatever stories they are. I know so many women who tell stories that are like just heinous and it's, it's good. It's so good to know someone who's helping heal that for people in a real way. And thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank but, you. I really appreciate having you. I can't wait till I can see you in real life and hug you again. Girl, I'm hugging it's, you right now. I, oh, oh, it's a good news. Have it also, have it also, have it also, have it also. <laughs> <laughs> and hug the kiddies for me. I can't wait to see them again. And tell Michael I said hi. And kisses to you. Bye-bye. Oh, I want baby. Bebon. I know. Enormous, enormous. <laughs> Fantastic. All right. Thank you so Take much. Up.